gifts of devotion. Now, devotion is one that comes from 1 Corinthians 9, 2nd chapter, 9 to 11 verse. It reads this way. But as it is written, I have not seen nor he has heard, neither have entered into the heart of the man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. For God has revealed unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deaf things of God. For what a man knoweth, the things of a man, save the Spirit of a man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Let us go to God in grace. I close the day Bible. We come this morning, my Father, with thanksgiving in our hearts. Thank you, God. Not because we've been so good or so kind. We have sinned and fallen short of thy glory once again, O oh Lord. So we come back and that you please have mercy upon us. We thank you for another day's journey. Yes, we do, Lord. Last night as we slept in the near end of death. You touched us with the finger of love this morning. Yeah. Our eyes open to see a brand new day. But I just want to say thank you. Thank, thank you. you. My Father, we thank you for the family this morning of the United States. Yes, Lord. Father, thank, we you. thank you. Thank you. That you brought us together one more time. Yes, yeah, Lord. You want to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My Father, we pray not only for this church, but every church that will open that door in your son Jesus. Yes. My Father, we come this morning praying that our home be made home for peace and home. Yes, Lord. Yes. That our, the marriage be strengthened, my Father. Yeah, Lord. That we become better parents to our children. Yeah, Lord. And children be obedient to their parents. Yes, yes, Lord. We come this morning, my Father, praying for those who are sick and afflicted. Yes. We come praying for those who are dead and will bereave. Yeah, Lord. We come this morning thanking you for the man of God who's going to preach your word this morning, my Father. Yes, Lord. We ask that you continue to give him strength, knowledge, and understanding. Please, Lord. He put a hedge of protection around his family, my Father, Please, so that he will not get distracted in preaching and teaching your word. Yeah, Lord. We pray for yeah, our deacon ministry and our deacon ministry, yes, my Lord. Father. We ask that you allow us not to be stumbling blocks and, and the weather oaks, my Father, when we come to serve. Thank Please you. Please look down and have mercy for us. Please, Lord. Yes, Father, when the praying days are over, we ask for a home in your kingdom so we can continue to serve you forever. Yes, and these and all the blessings we ask for your son, Jesus' name. Jesus.
publicly to them, thank you so much for your patience um, and, and how you labor so hard to lead us into worship. Amen. And then for being patient with me as we work through some of the technological difficulties. Amen. Amen. Uh, I know that each and every one of these ladies and these gentlemen who serve us in the music ministry take their gifts very seriously. Amen. And I never Amen. want them to think that I don't take their gifts very seriously. Amen. And I value them and thank God for them. And a uh, shout out to Chuck Senior back there who is working diligently uh, and, 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 and has given up his expertise and skills uh, to help us bring our sound to another quality. And so uh, in the coming the days ahead, you will continue to experience a, a high quality sound. So I just want to thank everybody all in the afternoon. Uh, however, I'm from the old school. And I remember uh, preaching, singing, and praying before we had the microphone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and, and so I would never stop church. Mm -hmm. Amen. I wish I had a witness. Come on, come on. Stop church, we'll work through. Amen. 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 And again, that is not in any way an indication or indictment on the value that I uh, place upon all the skilled individuals who labor and pray and practice. Amen. Amen. However, I want you to understand that the audience that we ultimately uh, play for is him. Amen. We need to get the bass and the treble and the alto and, you know, balance out. But I just stopped by this morning to tell you, he can hear your prayer. Amen. He can hear it. He can't hear your prayer. Amen. So we say praises unto him. Amen. Amen. So I, uh, I just want to say that. Also, I, I want to... Um, uh, uh, remind everyone because you are a very a conscientious group of people, progressive, and you keep up on things. You do realize that the virus, uh, we're seeing a rising numbers once again. Amen. So uh, the CDC recommendations are if you are sitting within six feet of someone who is not in your household, is that you wear the mask. Those are the CDC recommendations. If you are within six feet of someone uh, who is not in your household, that you wear a mask. Amen? Amen. And so we're going to ask that you would observe that protocol. Again, if you're within six feet of someone uh, who is not in your household, ask that you're going to wear a mask. And if you are in need of one, just slip your hand up and one of our ushers uh, will bring them to you. Now, once again, we're not going to have any confrontations about the mask, okay? We're just asking you to uh, be uh, conscientious and keep yourself safe and be mindful of other people's safety. Amen. Amen. Give God praise today. Uh, we worry. It's all praise. Um, also, we want to uh, share an announcement regarding... Uh, the VBS. We would like everybody to come out on this Wednesday at 6.30 for VBS. There are classes for everyone. Again, we're asked that you would register so we can have an accurate count around materials and around food. Uh, asking that all VBS volunteers to come to the front view immediately after service. And then I'm asking that all trustee members who are present today in worship, if you would meet me after worship, just to give you a quick um, uh, um, message regarding our meeting on tomorrow, because I understand that some of you all, uh, your information did not get to you, so I just want to talk to you about that. Amen? Amen. Okay. Is, is anybody here other than me who's still excited? <laughs> to be a Christian. <laughs> Amen. I'm talking about still excited to be a Christian. I'm talking about still excited to be a Christian. I was glad when they said unto me, How let us go unto the house of the Lord. Amen.
fault is when I traveled, if I couldn't get into the Delta Club, then, you know, I would look at all the other clubs, the Continental Club, the Acro Club, and everything, and I thought that I had to pay to get into those places. And, 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 and it, it made me think about what Paul is talking about today. Uh, Paul says to the church at Corinth, he says, so then let no one walk in him. Paul, Paul, what Paul was really saying was that, see, you all have only scratched the surface mm. of what is available to you in Christ. Mm. Mm. Come on. Are y'all wrong with me? Mm -hmm. uh, he, he said, see, y'all have gotten so enamored with the personalities at Corinth that you don't understand that all things belong to you. Isn't it something how uh, God has so much for us? Mm -hmm. and, and, and often we focus on one or two minuscule things. And, and we lose sight of all that is available. So let, let me come down your aisle and help you to see a little bit clearer. Uh, you, you started a job uh, before in your life, and at some point you sit down with the human resources manager. And you might want to talk to Sister Morgan about this afterwards. She could probably explain this a whole lot more clearly, since that is her area of expertise. But one of the roles of the human resource manager is to make you aware of your benefits package. And, and, and often, uh, uh, there are those of us who have monies coming out of our paychecks paying for benefits that we never access. And, and what Paul is saying uh, to the church at Corinth is that, see, there's so much more that God has for you. And, and, and you have just become fixated and focused on personalities in the church that you don't even understand the power that's available to you. You don't even understand the promises that are available to you. You don't understand the provisions that God has made for you. And, and, and it made me think about uh, uh, people who always like the name drop. Uh, uh, you, you ever run into people who always name dropping about who they know and that kind of trying to impress you by uh, dropping all these big names? And they'll go so far as to pull their phones out and show you who address they got. I remember I was talking to this brother down in Augusta, Georgia. Uh, we were the masters was coming up, and, and I was trying to get into the to the practice session. I couldn't afford to go to the masters. I just wanted to see can anybody get me a ticket to get into the practice session. I just wanted to watch. The practice. And, and, and so he said, Oh man, I know Scotty Pippen. And I'm thinking to myself, last time I checked one, Scotty don't play. <laughs> and, 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 and so he said, Let me show you this picture of me and Scotty and everything. I said, Well, what they got to do with the Masters and everything, you know? And, and he said, Oh, well, Scotty is a member. I said, I don't know about that. He said, I said, But hey, it's your, your story, you tell it, you know? And, and he said, Well, Scotty uh, is a member. I got Scotty's number. <laughs> and he started playing with it. You know what? Scotty must be the change in the And Paul was trying to get this church to understand. Quit dropping the Thomas name. Quit dropping Paul's name. Quit dropping Peter's name. But there is a name that you ought to drop every chance you get. You ought to tell somebody about the name of Jesus. Talking to my godmother last week, you know, uh, her name is Lisa Tripp, affectionately known as Sugar Mom in our family. And, 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 and if you heard, remember last year I told you she had a brain aneurysm and almost died? Do you remember that? Well, well, I was talking to her and, and uh, I said, uh, Sugar, how you doing? She said, I'm doing well, man. And she said, How's it about your family? I said, Sugar, let me tell you something. I said, If you hear me complain, it's just because I want some attention. Amen. Because the Lord, I dropped that down. The Lord Jesus Christ has been good to me. She said, she said, you know what? He's been good to me too. I said, I know. I said, I came to see you when you were in rehab. She said, I don't even remember. Y'all stay with me. She said, let me tell you what happened, man. She said, I went to the prison to preach to the women, and they had a mix-up, and I got a little frustrated. She says, when I came out of prison, she said, I sat in my car. She was a surgeon, uh, a, a surgical nurse for almost 30 years. She said, I felt something cold going down the back of my head. And I reached up and there was nothing on the outside of my head. She said, being a surgical nurse, I realized what was happening, that I was bleeding in my brain. She said, I had the presence of mind because of Jesus. Y'all gonna get it in a minute. Uh, uh, because of Jesus, she said, I had the presence of mind to reach up and touch on stuff. All right. mm -hmm. She said, and the next thing I remember, mm -hmm. it was.
Let me say it again. Because you have access to God, All right. you have access from God. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Access. Remember, 1 Corinthians 1, 2, when Paul opens his letter up, he says to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be his holy people, together with all those who call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. So, so first of all, Paul says, you actually have access to God. Mm -hmm. Right? And again, so if you're going to name drop, drop that name. Right. Right. Drop, drop that name. Again, I'm talking with one of my brothers this week, and we're talking about the journey and the struggle. And, and this is my, uh, uh, my, my other older brother, who will be 60 years old next month, and who's just reminiscing about how the Lord has brought us. Amen. And, and, and I said, you know, for instance, talking about God's grace, I said, for instance, you know, I have two of my best friends in the world who I won't name uh, for the sake of a privacy uh, who, who, who went astray and uh, living very broken lives. And my brother reminded me, he said, but you're not where you are because you're better than that. Amen. Amen. Right. He said, you went up because of the grace of God. We talk that name again.
with the waitress. She said, come on, man, let's, let's go. She's taking too long. I said, just hold on a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because Raquel was sitting with her back to the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting where I could see the kitchen. Right. And when Raquel said, let's go, I saw the waitress coming with the ice in the cup already. I could see something she couldn't see. I was <laughs> Yeah. 
tell the trouble, listen. Yeah. I know you probably don't know who I am. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you about Jesus. Yeah. Jesus told me that even trouble, yeah. he's going to work too. Amen. Yeah. Jesus told me that next time you're dealing with your haters, mm -hmm. help them to understand that, look, I don't know what you think your role is in my life today, but you're, you're really an elevator. Yeah. So, so, so what, what your, your responsibility to me is to drive me closer to God yeah. and call me to call on that man so that I can experience his pressure. Yeah. So what are the implications mm. or the practical ways mm. we can embrace the fact that God has given us all things? Mm. Two things I want to tell you. One, we have to be faithful over time. Mm. Amen. He's giving you all things, but not all things to squander. Mm, Amen. That's right. That's right. How, 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 Pastor, can I be faithful over time? Psalm 90 12 says, Teach us to number our days. That we may present to you a heart of wisdom. Mm -hmm. But I like, I like the way Eugene Peterson translates it. He says, Teach us to live well. Mm. Teach us to live wisely. Mm. Mm. So I thought about that. In the course of being in the church, I've seen so many people choose to exalt themselves mm -hmm. for the benefit of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. You missed that. Mm -hmm. They chose to, be, to exalt themselves mm -hmm. because it was in the best interest of the kingdom. Amen. Now I was born at 90. It just wasn't last. Night. Yes, sir. So let me help you understand something. So you and I know people, and I hope you're not one of these people, who say, God, I'm going to do more in the kingdom. Mm. Right? So I asked myself, how do I help you really see this clearly? Let's say you own a business, right? And you have an employee who works for you part time, 20 hours a week. Whatever it is y'all do with that business, the production of requirement is 10 a day. Mm -hmm. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. 20 hours a week, every hour you're on the clock, you need to produce 10 of these, whatever they are. However, this particular employee is only producing five an hour. Mm -hmm. And they come to you. And they say, you know what? I can do more for the company. I want you to make me full time. <laughs> See, that ain't even hard, is it? <laughs> so why would you invest more mm. in an individual mm -hmm. to do less with more? Mm. Come on, come on, sir. Some of us are crying out to God. God, open this door for me. God, do that for me because I've convinced myself that the kingdom needs more of me. And God said, no, what the kingdom needs is for you to be faithful where you are.
Rick Warren said time is your most precious gift Amen. because you only have a set amount of it. I dare you. I dare you Watch yourself, to take 24 and multiply by seven. Uh-huh. <laughs> I dare you. And get, get that number of rocks and put them in the jar. Matter of fact, let me make it easy. Whatever your age is right now, subtract that from 80. Let's just go with that number. Because the word says that man is given three score and ten if I read his strength. He should persevere more. So I'm going to add another 10 to it. Uh-huh. And here's what I would say to you. Whatever the difference is between 80 and what your age is right now, get yourself that number of rocks and put it in a big jar. And at the end of every day, take a rock. And ask yourself, what did I do with it today? Come on. Uh-huh. Jesus. What did I do with it today? And as you see that rock pile dwindling down,
Hey! 